This is a video in a series explaining the changes that are coming with new Google Sites and how it's going to affect our current slash older Google Sites, which from this moment forward are being referred to as classic sites. Classic because um, it would be rude to call them old sites. So these two products are very, very different from each other. Um, I don't want to say night and day, but uh, New Sites is not simply an upgrade of classic sites. It's a completely different product and it does completely different things. At the time of this recording, the new Google Sites is very new. Uh, it's only been out for a couple of weeks. Uh, the amount of options and tools is very limited and more content uh, options, uh, tools will be added over time. What I wanna address in this video is how new sites is affecting classic sites. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that new sites does not mean that you will be unable to access or edit your classic sites. Uh, that is not the case. Classic sites will be available uh, through 2017, through 2018, possibly even longer than that. They have guaranteed from the time of this recording that there's gonna be a minimum uh, two year window where classic sites will still be available. So let's jump into a couple of classic sites and take a look at some of the features that were useful or at least iconic to that tool set. And then I'll explain the differences um, in new sites. So uh, to access sites in general, uh, you need to be in a Chrome browser. You're gonna go to the top right and find this uh, little magic Rubik's cube. We're gonna click on it and select the sites logo. Uh, they're still using the classic sites logo, which is uh, sort of like a gray bar with a blue box and a small light gray box in the bottom left hand corner. We're gonna select that. Now your list of sites will be here. One of the complaints users have had about our classic sites interface is that they couldn't always find what they were looking for. Um, happy to report that that has been alleviated with new sites. Uh, new sites is completely integrated with Drive, so your new sites are actually um, kept in your Google Drive. So there will be an icon for them, you can find them in Google Drive, you can sort them in Google Drive, and you can access them through Google Drive, which is tremendously useful. But here in the classic interface, I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna grab uh, this site, Software Skills Development, and we're gonna look at a few things. Now, a lot of complaints were made over the years that uh, the tool set for classic sites was both uh, underwhelming and overwhelming. Underwhelming in that it was very difficult to make a good looking, easy to use site. Uh, overwhelming in that there were so many tools and options it was very hard to learn and master. But over time, uh, as a school system, we did uh, find uh, a rhythm for uh, Google Sites, and we took the best features of it and we really, uh, we really put them to good use. Um, so one of the cool things about it is there were two different types of navigation you could use, and they were fully customizable and you could have both at the same time. So you could have a robust left-hand navigation, and then you could have a horizontal navigation that just included links to the most popular parts of your site. That is no longer the case with new sites. Uh, with new sites, you can have a horizontal navigation or a left-hand navigation. Those are your only options. So that's a, a little bit of a change right there. Another one is uh, tables. So when you were building a classic site, you had the ability to choose different um, layouts for a page, um, and they would present you with a, a dual column, uh, a tri-column. Uh, sometimes there would be a box at the top, three in the middle, and then one at the bottom. Um, it kind of presented you with different things you could use to quickly lay out your site. Uh, some users wanted a little bit more control in that's where tables um, started being abused. Now, when I refer to tables, I am talking about um, our friends from Excel, uh, a series of columns and rows uh, composed of cells that contain data. 
So in their purest form, uh, this is what a table would be. It would list items, list data in a uh, organized manner. Now, tables, unfortunately, were also being used to force content onto certain parts of a page. So users would create a table and then place um, certain images or graphics in one box to try to force it into, like, say, the top right corner. And then they would put um, another image in the bottom right cell to try to force it into the bottom right corner, and so on and so forth. Whatever use you had for tables and whatever you're doing with them, um, there are currently no tables in new sites. So repeat, there are no new tables, uh, or sorry, no tables in the new sites interface. Now there are workarounds for it, and we will talk about those in other videos. I'm just kind of running through a quick what's what uh, comparison of the two um, two tool sets. All right, so one of the best features of a Google site in the classic uh, interface was you had control over your audience. So you were building a site and when you went to the share button, you could add additional uh, editors to a site. You could add uh, additional owners to a site, which was very confusing um, for Google Drive users because in Google Drive, there could only ever be one owner of something. Um, and you could even control specifically who that audience was. Uh, if you wanted to make a site for your team, for example, uh, it would be a website that only you know, eight people, a dozen people could ever access, which was pretty cool. Um, it had the ability, much like a Google Drive document, to be shared publicly uh, with anyone who had the link, with anyone who worked for our school system, anyone who worked for our school system had the link, or if you had it set to off, only specific people you added on a uh, user-generated you know, VIP list. Pretty impressive. Um, that level of control over who your audience was was even more powerful if you put in the extra effort to do enable page level permissions, which you can see in the top right corner of my screen. If you had enable page level permissions, you could tell your site on a page by page basis who has access to which areas of your site. So as far as content control and um, privacy of classified information uh, and things like that, it was tremendous. Um, unfortunately, that is not available in new sites either. In fact, in the new sites interface, um, you have two options for your audience. Um, the people who work for the school system and the entire world. Those are your only two options. So you could understand that that would be problematic uh, if you had a IEP based website or um, an assessments based website, uh, a website with a lot of um, classified information that you didn't want every person working for the school system to have, you just wanted uh, your IRTs to have access to it. So um, there are ways around that with the new sites interface, but currently it is not as easy to manage permissions. So that's another big change that you have to keep in mind. Another big change is sub pages. Now this site that I'm showing right here does not have um, a lot of uh, what I call sub sub pages. That is to say, um, there is, uh, there are subpages, but there are not subpages of those subpages. So I'm going to go to this site, Elementary School uh, Education, and I'm going to demonstrate what's going on here. So the main page, the home page, is here. Um, another page of the site is Content Resources. And then Content Resources, as you can see here on the left hand side, it says Subpage Listing. So in Content Resources, there are five subpages of Content Resourcing. Uh, that's cool. If we click on, say, math resources, we discover that there are now roughly nine more subpages. So we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into uh, the website. And depending on where I go, I may or may not find even more um, subpages. In the new Google Sites, you can only have one layer, one level of subpages. So we could have content resources and we could have the five subpages underneath 
and that's it. It will not allow us to create sub pages of sub pages um, and so on and so forth. So from a content management perspective, you have to start to rethink how are you going to set up your new Google site? How are you going to present that content um, without the benefit of uh, an unlimited number of sub pages? All right, another thing. In classic sites, uh, many of us discovered a page template called File Cabinet. And we you know, fell in love with it because it was a very uh, useful way to present uh, files, uh, URL links, and Google Drive files to a specific audience in one place um, and just send them to that location. So you need parent resources for math, go to this site, all the parent resources you need for math will be there. Well, there are no file cabinets in new sites. So something like this would have to be rebuilt as a Google Drive folder with the permissions being managed in Google Drive and, and whatnot. And then using the new sites tool set, you could still make something like this available. And there are pros and cons, and most of them are pros to this new approach. But it is another thing that you have to keep in mind when making that transition from classic sites to new sites. On that note, a lot of people ask, um, how do I get my classic site, my current website, uh, turned into a new site? Um, is there some magical button or tool that can make that happen? Unfortunately, at this time, in December of 2016, there is no migration tool. And when I say migration tool, I mean uh, a, a way to take a older site and automatically turn it into a newer site. So the only way to migrate over your website content to a new site is to rebuild it page by page. And that would mean starting at your you know, homepage, uh, download these pictures so you can re-upload them to your new site. Um, copy over the, uh, the font, uh, the text, and paste it into the new site. Um, make sure you have the videos either download them or store them on Drive or find them on YouTube and then re-embed them on the new site. Uh, you need an early childhood page, you gotta make an early childhood page. Um, step by step, line by line, box by box, you have to rebuild the entire site. There is no fast way to do that. So, that begs the question, when should I migrate? Well, you have a two year window. Um, they are planning to release a migration tool within the next six months or so. So if you want to wait until June or July of 2017 to see if a migration tool is released, um, I would certainly encourage you to do so. You can continue to use your classic site. You can continue to edit content on that site, manage that site, share that site, and make that site available to your users. So there is no need to panic. There is no need to freak out. You will be able to continue using these sites. And as better migration tools become available, you may want to eventually take the plunge and transfer the site over. Keep in mind that eventually classic sites will be phased out. So there will come a time where if you do in fact want to keep your site, you will have to find a way to get that migrated over. So don't wait until the last minute to do this. Uh, definitely stay in the loop about how long classic sites will be available and what options become available for migration. If you have any additional questions about classic sites versus new sites, um, migration, migration tools, um, or anything really related to classic sites and how they're being affected by new sites, please feel free to email dmt at smcps.org, and we will try to answer those questions for you. Thank you.